The first time, that's the first time I've ever received an X-rated ovation. <laughs> this is quite... Thank you. Now, tell me something. Is that... Was that applause from the heart or from the sign? <laughs> Did we have the applause sign on tonight? At yes, a little bit. Do they do that? Once in a while. See, that's not fair. People should feel free to applaud, and you shouldn't have to turn on a sign. Right. <laughs> turn off the sign. <laughs> Well, I welcome, this should be fun tonight. I'm Johnny Carson, the emperor of comedy. And uh, just like Hirohito, you won't be able to understand a word of my monologue either tonight. Uh, you sound great tonight. Friday night audiences start to cook. Last night we had an audience that was, uh, how should I put it, not hip. Uh, no, they really weren't. Uh, dumb is a better word. How dumb? I'll tell you how dumb they were, they. They thought Oysters Rockefeller was another brother. It was, uh, not only were they dumb, but it was a, a weird, flaky crowd. And I knew I was in trouble because I, I saw the audience bus. You know, they came in a bus last night. And they had a big banner on the audience bus last night that says, Get rid of flea collars, save the tick. Now, you know you've got a strange group. Maybe that's not what it said. I miss, might have missed it. Uh, Doc is off tonight doing something. I'm not sure what. I think he's resting. He's the resting. Station, yeah. And uh, filling in... Is Mr. Neutron, <laughs> Mr. Atomic Energy, Mr. Tommy Newsom over here. <laughs> Tommy's a little weak tonight. He went down to the Red Cross today and donated a pint of mayonnaise. <laughs> uh, I uh, would now like to do our bicentennial half minute. We don't get a full minute on the show, but 200 years ago today. Now, please, if you're serious. The Continental Congress was called and convened in Philadelphia. Patrick Henry's speech scorched England as he said those famous words. <laughs> Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? I don't know what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. 200 years later, those same words were used by Robert Blake at Universal. <laughs> and that's the way it was, and that's the way it is. <laughs> Who are these guys sitting over here? <laughs> huh? Professional laughers. <laughs> See, vi violinists are never, I've said this before, they never laugh much. No. I don't know what it is. It's the rosin or something on the board. Or <laughs> they, anyway, they're for uh, Diana Ross tonight, yeah. who is with us, and uh, we, we, one of the great singers. So excuse me, gentlemen. Oh, we have a lady. Oh, uh, uh, what else is happening around the country? You probably saw in the papers that President Ford last night held a state dinner for. Emperor Hirohito and his wife, and uh, two leaders had some interesting meetings. You see, Hirohito, as you know, speaks only Japanese, no English at all. President Ford, of course, speaks English, no Japanese. Uh, they got along like uh, Ford in Congress. <laughs> I think the president may have, uh, may have committed a diplomatic blunder last night, and I don't know if I should say this or not, but he told Hirohito during the war his favorite disc jockey was Tokyo Rose. <laughs> 
The, uh... <laughs> it's this group over here that's hurting me. <laughs> now, the Japanese embassy also threw a dinner in honor of the emperor, and they say it was the longest dinner in the history of Washington. They had 400 guests and only one hibachi. <laughs> Here's, uh, here's an item of local interest. I don't know how many states have corporal punishment in schools, but Los Angeles just decided today by a vote of the city council that they would no longer have any corporal punishment starting October the 1st in schools out here. No, there's, there's no more cor corporal punishment. I think it's a good idea, and it'll do away with a lot of violence in schools. Because the teachers were getting a little tired of getting beat up. <laughs> I have another solution, you know. If a child is punished, what they should do, you know, the teacher does nothing, but they call in a, put a phone call to the mafia, and they send a, over a hit spanker. <laughs> okay, that's not such a good idea. Great one. What else has happened? The post office rates. December, it's, it's after Christmas they go up. December the 28th, post office rates go up. I think postcards go up from seven to nine cents. Whatever happened to the penny postcard? What, didn't it used to be a penny? Yeah. Nine cents for a postcard after December 28th. And uh, the reason they're going up, uh, as I understand it, is because not only does the CIA and the FBI open your mail now, but they're adding a gypsy handwriting expert to analyze your handwriting. So that, of course, is going to cost a lot more money. <laughs> they asked the postmaster why the rates were going up from 10 to 13 cents on first-class mail. And he said that the stagecoach drivers needed new whips. <laughs> Here's an interesting item. I'm going to hit gold any moment now. Uh, we're going right into Sutter's Mill with a big one here. Here come on, here come a nugget. Uh, guess who is going to be singing for Queen Elizabeth at a command yes. performance in England? Telly Savalas. No. No. Yes, is going to do at the Palladium in England. A command. Telly Savalas is singing <laughs> for Queen Elizabeth. That's. I understand that's the first time that the Queen has ever agreed to hear a topless singer. That's going to give a new meaning to God Save the Queen. Uh, I, no, I think to having Savala sing for the Queen is our way of getting back at them for hanging Nathan Hale. Okay. Rule of, rule of comedy. I broke that rule of comedy. Three. You want to feel old all of a sudden? What? You know who's celebrated a birthday today? Snoopy and oh. Charlie Brown yes. celebrated their 25th birthday today. Oh. Does that make you feel... Yes. Old all of a sudden? Yeah, Charlie Brown, he's not as naive, you know, as they used to be. I understand Lucy's attorney showed up at the playground today with a subpoena. <laughs> and Snoopy. <laughs> and Snoopy, is, that's old for a dog, isn't it, 25? Yeah. And it's kind of sad. Uh, he has an orthopedic flea collar, I understand now. <laughs> he has a, a round-the-clock nurse in the kennel, and he's only allowed to wag his ta a tail <laughs> on national holidays. That would have been a real good one. <laughs> but it's too late now. Uh, anyway, tonight, did you tell everyone whom we have, Sporty? Yes, but you may tell them again. Certainly, we have. I've mentioned Diana Ross is with us tonight. Mr. Tony Curtis is here. <laughs> Elaine Strick and Ray Johnson. And we'll continue in a couple of minutes. <laughs> we'll be right back. Great news. Now you can get the Green Giant's good vegetables and big savings, too. It's a giant field day of savings. Look, when you buy specially marked Green Giant brand vegetables, you'll get money-saving coupons. Good on your next purchase. So stock up now on lots of good things from the garden. Oh, and while you're shopping, look for the special Little Sprout doll offer. It's another big bargain during the Giant's field day of savings. Like he says, ho, ho, ho. The delicate, fragile beauty of Lily of the Valley inspires this newest Christian Dior design by Mark Bohan for one Sutter. Lily of the Valley blossoms on sheets, pillowcases, bedspreads, comforters, dust drops. Lily of the Valley. It's quite simply the most romantic feeling in the world. Make a night of it. Good night.
right? No AIDS. Yes, today is Friday. What? Today's Friday the, the 4th. Third. You know, I, I, I don't know whether it was yesterday or possibly today, but uh, you might like to join me in wishing a, a gentleman who is certainly an institution in, the, in our business or all over the world, uh, whose birthday is this week, who celebrated his 85th Fifth. birthday. And that, of course, is Mr. Groucho, Groucho Marx. Marx. So, Groucho, happy birthday. Happy birthday. 85 years. Yeah, they're still salty. Oh, yeah, he's still falling out. What? They had a movie on the other night on Channel 11 or something. I think it was a night at the, uh, night at the opera, and mm -hmm. then they had a whole Marx Brothers week, and God, they were funny. Yeah. Day oh. at the races. He holds up well. If you say the secret wide, <laughs> duck will come down. Um, you seem to have an incredible amount of paper in front of you, cards, paraphernalia. Are you planning something special this evening? Well, now, they'll think this is a gag, but this is really not a gag. Um... Did you know that they, have you ever been in the post office? You go in the post office often? Not often, but I've been in a post office, yes. Well, I know you've been yeah, in a post yeah. office, but... My daddy let me go in when I was about seven or eight years old, and I looked around. They still have in the post office around the country the... Men want. The wanted, yeah. the ten most wanted fugitives in the United States, and we were, were kind of interested, and our writers asked the Federal Bureau to send the ten most wanted criminals. Now, this is, this is not a gag, incidentally. We have another one. We'll show you our own ten most wanted. Lists. <laughs> yeah. So don't. This this is this is for real. And I understand that when they did this, on like when the B from Zimbalist was doing the FBI, that they were responsible over the period of years for under for uncovering mm -hmm. many wanted people because people see them. And of course, as they always say, if you see any of these people, don't take any action. Don't try to do anything. But just simply call the police or the local FBI agency. But these are for real. And there's some bad people running around. Mm -hmm. This gentleman is named Dwight. Alan Armstrong is wanted for sabotage and destruction of government property and conspiracy. This is this is for real now. These are these are not jokes. If you happen to see that that gentleman, we'll just show you these. This is Robert Gerald Davis, interstate flight, murder, armed robbery, atrocious assault, and battery. Hmm. And he bites his nails on top. Right. Yes. <laughs> I shouldn't do jokes on no. these. These are that is that is the gentleman. Now these these are legitimate. They were sent to us. Um, Billy, Billy Dean Anderson, interstate flight, assault to murder, attempted burglary. These are the pictures now that the FBI has posted all over the country. Hmm. You know, television, strangely enough, is a one way to disseminate information. I didn't give you the name. Benjamin Hoskins Paddock, one of the ten most wanted fugitives in the United States. David Sylvan Fine, sabotage, destruction of government property, conspiracy. Oh. Leo Frederick Burt, sabotage, destruction of government property, conspiracy. <laughs> and just so we're not accused of being sexist, <laughs> here's Catherine Ann Power, one of the ten most wanted. Interstate flight, murder, theft of government property, <laughs> bank robbery, William Lewis Heron Jr., kidnapping. Mm. Those are mean. Look. Now those those are for real. And so we we're not going to make any jokes about those. If you if you do see any of those people, you know, as they say, don't don't try to do anything. Just get on the phone, call the FBI. We uh, we looked around for some <laughs> other people that we thought uh, you might be on the lookout for. And, uh, <laughs> these you do not have to call the FBI. Uh, for example. Um, all in fun, of course. Earl Butts, wanted for... <laughs> now he's wanted for... Wanted for the Great Grain Robbery, alias the Grim Reaper. <laughs> His crimes include wheat napping, molesting corn, and putting sandwiches on the endangered species list. <laughs> this man is extremely dangerous when he starts making sense, so look out for him. This is Eloise Kurdish. She is the milk commercial girl. <laughs> yes. Wanted for pushing milk. <laughs> Previously convicted on a variety of charges, including assault with yogurt. <laughs> Approach with caution. Has a severe case of the cutes. J.J. <laughs> <laughs> <J>. McSilverman. <laughs> the mad programmer wanted for killing television. <laughs> Also wanted a moral charge for exposing the Montefuscos during the family hour. <laughs> this man has a 55-year-old body and a 12-year-old mind. 
And he is five feet six inches tall most of the week. <laughs> May be considered dangerous. Uh, Will kill at the drop of a rating. Watch out for him. <laughs> ah, Horton Fogel. <laughs> Horton Fogel is wanted for opening the CIA's mail. <laughs> this man is a double agent. Carries his real nose in his attaché case. <laughs> his attaché case. <laughs> this man is easily recognized. Usually carries a boiling steam kettle. If you see this man, tell him to write to his mother. <laughs> Herman Fogel. Aha. Mohammed Ben Nayafat. <laughs> Wanted for plunder of the United States. This man is also the inventor of the extra nine tenths on gas prices. <laughs> Description looks like an unmade bed. Was last seen driving a late model camel with air conditioned humps. <laughs> Approach this man carefully. He's armed with long dipstick. <laughs> this man is wanted for molesting politics. <laughs> Recently escaped from a mansion in Sacramento. <laughs> believed headed for the White House. Description, 5 feet 11, weight 190 pounds, color of hair, maybe black, brown, blue, or orange. <laughs> Tony Orlando and Dawn, wanted for impersonating an Oreo cookie. Description. This trio may be considered dangerous. Approach with caution. If cornered, Tony may jump from platform shoes. <laughs> oh, this is a vicious looking. This is Ted Yutz. <laughs> Wanted for statutory mustache. And also taking his face across state lines. Also wanted for tax evasion. He illegally took the sparrows in his mustache as a deduction. He's a description def defies description. Caution, this man may be considered extremely dangerous. Recently shot it out with a meter maid. <laughs> Howard Hughes. <laughs> this is a recent photo. Hughes has no family, just immediate money. Anyone seeing this man, call your psychiatrist immediately. Ah, the Aurora family. Wanted for aggravated graffiti and conspiracy to deface toilet paper. <laughs> These suspects were last seen behind the little house on the prairie. <laughs> Wanted for the crime of her choice. <laughs> You'll know it when you see it. Caution. Maybe carrying concealed weapons. Advise frisking immediately. <laughs> if captured, we'll consider plea bargaining over cocktails. <laughs> Wanted for noise pollution. <laughs> Also wanted for leaving his toupee on a fire escape, thereby contributing to the delinquency of a tomcat. <laughs> Caution. Maybe dangerous. Mouth has been known to go off on his face. <laughs> you see this man approach with earmuffs. Those are our ten most wanted. We have the great Diana Ross with us tonight, Tony Curtis, Elaine Stritch, and uh, Ray Johnson, who has been with us before. So, you ever thought you could paint your hair? Uh. Keep your eye on this clear all commercial. Because you can't. Here's an idea that is so good and so simple. You'll wonder why it never happened before. Hair painting with quiet touch. You just brush on quiet touch, wait, shampoo, and you'll see a glow that picks up where nature left off. Quiet Touch gives your hair quiet little shimmers of light. So if you're the least bit shy about doing something to your hair, now you know what to do. Introducing hair painting with Quiet Touch from Clairol. Imagine feeling so good in the morning when you had that headache last night. That's gentle Excedrin PM. Excedrin PM relieves the headache and its tension, helps you relax for a good night's sleep. So the next morning, you should wake refreshed with no grogginess. Imagine feeling so good in the morning when you had that headache last night. That's Excedrin PM, the nighttime pain reliever. Imagine feeling so good in the morning.
right back. Thank you, Tom. Diana Ross is with us tonight. <laughs> Diana Ross returns the uh, motion picture screen for the first time since she was a, an Academy Award nominee for her performance in Lady Sings the Blues. She opens in a picture called Mahogany, which opens in New York on October the 8th and here in California on the 15th. And she's, uh, she's going here tonight to sing the theme from Mahogany, which is also featured on her latest album. Would you welcome superb talent, Diana Ross. applauding the monologue. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine. You're singing super and you look super. Thank you. I feel yeah. really good. Are feathers back in? Are well, for me, yes. I was kidding you backstage because you are, uh, you're rather pregnant. When I say rather pregnant, I mean rather along in pregnancy, aren't you? Yes, I'm due any day now. In fact, oh. <laughs> the doctor told me to stay please stay tuned. off of my feet because it'll, in any minute I could go into the hospital. Is that right? Yeah. Actually, the baby's not due until the beginning of November, but I, I start to ripen early. 
Would you like to see something? What? This is the fattest I've been in a very long time. Oh. <laughs> That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. That brings back fond memories. <laughs> it does. It does. You got the two girls already. I have two already. girls. Two We're girls. hoping for a little boy this yeah. time. We'll uh, accept what we get. <laughs> yeah. Our little boy, so I can name him Robert Ross. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's nice. Yeah. They used to say that there are all kinds of ways. Doctors, I don't think, have come up with anything technically. They can determine the sex before birth. But people used to say they used to hold some kind of a charm, and if it swung this way over the abdomen or went in a circle, do all kinds of people try to tell you You'd various... You'd be amazed that a uh, young lady walked backstage just now. She said, I know you're going to have a boy. And I said, oh, oh, really? Now, what and was her reasoning? Well, she just said, you look like you're going to have a boy. Wonderful. <laughs> My doctor said the heartbeat is low and strong, and I can tell by the baby's head that it might be a boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Might be. Well, one of them's got to be right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, they both said boys. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll interrupt you for a second. We'll be right back. Stay where you are. Sidney Cash creates beautiful crystal. It's the only thing he puts his name on. And this is the only thing you'll see the wishbone name on, salad dressing. Because salad dressing is everything to wishbone. For wishbone Italian, we marinate the perfect spices and herbs in oil, lemon juice, and vinegar for real Italian flavor. No wonder wishbone Italian is number one. Wishbone. Salad dressing is the only thing we put our name on. Heinz ketchup. Think how good it's going to taste when it finally gets there. Anticipation. Anticipation is making me wait. It's slow good. It's keeping me waiting. Thick, rich tasting Heinz ketchup. It's slow good. Emergency, followed by Burt Reynolds and Diane Cannon in Seamus, Saturday. Tom. Super. We're talking with Diana Ross and Tony Curtis is here tonight, Elaine Stritch and uh, Ray Johnson. 
You know, there's that old cliche that women who are going to give birth have that glow about them. And it's true, they really do, for whatever it does for the, the body and changes the body chemistry. But women seem to glow when they're pregnant. I don't feel any different, really, but everyone has commented that yeah. they feel that I, I seem to feel different or yeah. act different or something. And doctors say that it's good for women to, uh, you know, years ago, if somebody would have walked out on television or, or worked or when they were nine months or that close, they would mm -hmm. say they'd be abhorred, you know, that somebody would do that. But now doctors say it's the best thing in the world. Well, we know the, the route to the uh, cedars of Lebanon from here. Have you ever time this? <laughs> yeah. People I used to do that. To, yes, People I used have. to do that on the first child especially. They would make absolutely sure. Yes. They knew exactly how long it took to get there. Well, you should know if you're going to continue to work, you know. And I decided that I'm going to work because... First of all, I'm very happy to, you know, be able to work again after well, being in Rome and doing the film. Yeah, didn't you miss an opening of the your last picture yes, because I you did. were pregnant, and you're going to well, miss the opening of this one? So far, I've had a baby, the film, a baby, a film, and now the baby again. I'm missing a film. <laughs> well, if another film comes up, then it's another baby. <laughs> how long can that go on? In fact, that's what uh, Barry Gordy asked me last night. He yeah. said, "Would you tell me how many kids you're going to have so I can plan your career?" I mean, <laughs> are you planning to have a? Large number of kids, or do you just take it as it? Well, uh, I'm going to take it as it as it happens. happens but I, guess, uh, I really, I I used to say I wanted a lot of kids. Now I'll settle for the three. And it's really difficult to have a career and try to uh, raise a family. And yeah. it it's a big responsibility. Now, with or without a career, I yes. think of raising kids yes. is a full time job. Yeah. The story of mahogany is kind of a Cinderella type story, isn't it? It's a, a realistic fantasy, actually. It's yeah. something that could really, really happen, but it's kind of fantasy. It reminds us, we've discussed it, of Hollywood in the 40s. It's a real beautiful entertainment piece, uh, a lot of music, a lot of happiness, and a lot of really fun scenes. Right. And I enjoyed uh, making the film so much because uh, it's so different from Lady Sings the Booze. Yeah. But did, you yet, fan did you have fantasies as a child saying, someday I would like to be a... A star singer or a movie star or whatever? Well, see, I, I never... Re uh, the only thing I really wanted to be as a child was a designer. I wanted to design clothes. I got the opportunity during this film to design all the wardrobe in, did. in the film. Now, I experienced through that. I'm past that because I don't want to be a designer anymore. <laughs> it was much too hard work. Um, not only the designing was fine, but you had to, a small budget and you had to uh, go out shopping for the clothes that you couldn't make or didn't make sense to make, jeans and sweaters and things. Mm -hmm. and you took job. all of that on, huh? Mm-hmm. Don't want to do it again, though. Do they give you credit on the screen? Do they say? Yes, they do, and that's quite nice. But uh, I'll settle for uh, doing what I enjoy, which came naturally to me because I didn't study singing or acting, and I'm, I'm, I love to sing, and I'd like to stick with that. <laughs> yeah, that's great. When you were in Rome, I think, when you were filming there, there was a... I remember reading a press coverage or something that was about going to a fountain or something on the... It was cold. Did or, you see the pictures a, at all about that? Was it, I don't know, I don't think it was in a fountain, it was in a river or something. In a fountain. Uh, I was actually pushed, one of the scenes I was supposed to be pushed into this fountain. Well, we had no idea that it was going to be so cold. And I had to go in that fountain, be pushed in that fountain about three times. And it was like, you know, someone saying, go in again and like, let me stab you one more time. <laughs> I went in, okay, how many times do I have to go down? You know, and he said, sweetheart, you have to go under one more time. Well, what, what do you want me to, you know? Was well, this, this was not in the winter. This was supposed to be. <laughs> no, but it was very, very cold in Rome. And the fountain was ice cold. And there was no way they could warm it up because the water came right from wherever, yeah. up somewhere in the mountains, I guess. And uh, it was really freezing. Yeah. I tried a rubber suit. didn't help. Just kept the cold water yeah. next to me. Did you have your kids over there with you? Did I you? had the kids in Rome with me, and we had, uh, we had a good time, except they got sick towards the end. Uh, I don't know, some kind of, uh, just a change in the water and right. the food and everything. And that was a heavy responsibility, so I finally sent them home, and then I missed them, and you went through that. Mm -hmm. But I had a wonderful time there. I met Audrey Hepburn, and I spent a day with her, with the kids, and fabulous. I mean, I have always dreamed of meeting her, and it was yeah. exciting. It really was. Are you happy with the picture? Have you seen it yet? Do you have a film clip from the, uh, tonight? From this? Yeah, I haven't seen the entire film. Uh, I've seen the small work pieces. Okay. And uh, it's just finished, and I'm really happy that we have a portion. Okay, we'll we give everybody see. a little sneak preview, a short sneak preview. Yes. You have to watch the monitors here in the studio, and here it is, from Mahogany. As your alderman in this ward, my first act would be to organize block associations where they don't already exist. All right. All, All right. right. And once they do exist, use them to express the needs of the community in the city council. Yeah. 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 Well, that's great. Just 
still didn't tell me what you're going to do about getting my old man back. Because <laughs> I sure do need my old man. I can't get along without my old man. And none of us can get along without our old man. What about you? Right. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, if you just go uh, wait outside this door for a couple of minutes and uh, we'll uh, figure out a way to handle the, that one, okay? We just wanted to get some money here from this unemployment office here. <laughs> Give me my job, you know well, what I mean? Uh, well, if you uh, just uh, go outside... Yes, I'll meet you outside. <laughs> I'll meet you too if you give me a job. <laughs> You are outrageous, you know? I mean, did you have to smear those stickers from every stop sign from the restaurant to here? You're crazy! It's showbiz! You gotta give him some pizzazz, show him your charm! Ow! People, stop that sigh, yeah, and get out and vote for Brian! I said, people, stop that sigh, yeah, and get out and vote for Brian! Woo! People, stop that sigh! tell you what she said to me just as we were coming out of that film clip. She, you looked around. He says, where's my husband? He hasn't seen this. <laughs> I hadn't seen it either. Actually, it's, uh, it's really quite nice. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's Billy D, right? That's Billy D. Has your, your husband ever said, it may sound like a naive question, does your husband get jealous when you have a scene like that? Yes, he does. <laughs> but not too jealous. I can control that, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'd like to explain that scene. Brian in this scene is running for alderman, right. and uh, we, I was in love with him, but we broke up because of where I wanted to go right. in my life and my career. And I uh, meet him again at the unemployment office, and I started mm. making fun of him, but I made, it was nice, and then we have this reunion. And right you're here, back together again. Yeah. yeah. For all the songs that you've done, and all your big songs, which one you, is your favorite? Do you have fond memories of one particular one? Well, I'd like to tell you, I think I've been, this year is the fifth, I went to see the Supremes the other night, and right. uh, they reminded me that we've, been in show business 15 years this year. And out of all those, and that, and that, that's a long time. <laughs> I wouldn't have guessed that one. And, and they did a, one of our old songs on the stage, and, and I'd like to do it tonight because it really right. brought really wonderful memories. Do it right in here. Yeah. 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 The microphone right here.
Thank you. Look, I know you have to run early. It's a, it's a great kick to have you here again. Thank you. And I hope you have a great early course, even though you can't go to the old. What are you going to do? You sneak in and see Mahogany by yourself some night? I'm going to try to go and see you with an actual audience because I think that's where you get the true and honest, uh, yeah. you know, feeling what's happening. And I'll probably sneak in any night at the theater, the Crest Theater here right. in town. And we it opens the 15th out the here 15th, in California. The 15th or the 17th. And the 8th in New York City. And the 8th in New yeah. York. Yeah. Thanks for being here. I hope you have Thank a you. happy baby. Thank you. Huh? Baby, no. <laughs> Just born. <laughs> born too late. I should have had a guitar and started. You could have been great. You could have been dynamite. Love. My bush dog and me was sitting by the side. <laughs> we do a commercial. Then we have Tony Curtis. We have uh, Elaine Stretch, who's a fine actress, and we she hasn't been with us. And you never know what Elaine. Salty lady. Salty. She yeah. says what's on her mind. Is and this driving you nuts? What? I am so hungry. <laughs> Can you smell it? Right? Yes, we have one of our sponsors coming up. And it's, it's, it's driving me here. absolutely crazy. It's great, isn't it? Oh. Have you sneak a little yet? No. Uh, anyway, and also Ray Johnson, who um, has been on our show before, who has spent half of his 49 years in prison. And he is now out, obviously, or he wouldn't be here. <laughs> and, uh, we'll go anywhere to get a guest. But that's it. <laughs> but fascinating. He uh, works on uh, criminal research now at the Western Behavioral Institute. But uh, some, some story. Yeah. We'll uh, continue. Tony Curtis will be with us in just a couple of minutes. It's a very special coffee to make you feel warm and relaxed on the inside. General Foods International Coffees. It's our flavor that makes us special. Boy, homemade lasagna. This must have taken hours. No, I used hamburger helper. I thought they made skillet dishes. Still does, but now you can make it a new way. Just add simple things like milk, eggs, or cheese. Bake it, and you get a delicious homemade oven casserole. The recipe's on the box. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Tomorrow, a uh, Swedish meatball casserole? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hamburger helper, skillet dishes, and now oven casseroles. Either way, tastes homemade. The, string. the strings go when Diana Ross goes, huh? Ah, thought we had the strings for the whole show. Just for the out. Tony's not going to sing anyway. No. Tony Curtis has been a major motion picture star for 25 years. And he'll be starring on NBC this fall as McCoy. And the premiere episode, I understand, is going to be shown on the NBC Sunday Mystery Movie this Sunday, October the 5th at 9 p.m. And as they say, that's 8 p.m. Central. And of course, you can choke your local paper or your local time, time station. and station. <laughs> and we did. <laughs> and here's Tony Curtis. <laughs> Hi, Eddie. Nice to see you. How you doing? Great. Getting skinnier all the time. Thank you. Freddie, good evening. Good evening, Freddie. How you feeling? 
Okay, yourself? In velvet tonight, huh? That's right. That's well, let nice. me see. You're in cloth, I, I see. You're just plain cloth. <laughs> <laughs> you're the fancy. You can wear velvet. Yes. You can wear velvet and, uh, yes. and silk. I'm you, sorry? You can wear velvet and silk like Why that. Why couldn't you? I, I don't. I just, I'm not the velvet and silk type. That's not true. I've seen you in velvet and silk and you're smashing. <laughs> Okay, Haven't one, one time, and we don't want to talk about that. Big deal. <laughs> one crazy I, night, right. You know, it's hey, hard when I introduce you to say that you've been a major motion picture star for 25 years. Again, doesn't seem possible. It time goes by that really? fast, yeah. Now, how long have we been uh, seeing each other? 15, 18 years? Mm -hmm. Something like that? Yeah. When you say seeing each other. Well, uh, don't, I don't think you have to explain it. Uh, yes, I want to get off of that better. velvet and so forth. <laughs> Something like that. He's still bad, isn't there? Speak, you know, I asked so. Diana Ross about that she was yes. in this picture uh, like a Cinderella story. Now, you came out of the Bronx, right? Manhattan, New York, Manhattan and the Bronx. And the Bronx <laughs> Thank you. To Hollywood as a, as a contract, as a new young player. Right. That's a big tra That's a big transformation. Very big transformation. You still remember it? All Can you put it in perspective and say when the first time you walked out in Hollywood and... All of a sudden, there were people that you'd seen as a kid, and all of a sudden, you're a part of that. Yes. And how do you handle that without, you know, going bananas? I, I feel you have to get into it very early. Really? I think it's a, a process of uh, not only uh, intellectually ex ex examining and appreciating what can happen to you, but emotionally as well. You know, it, it has a, an incredible vibration uh, working in movies, right. you know, particularly, uh, you know, the picture profession for us in America really has been a, a great outlet for a lot of people who are disadvantaged in the sense that maybe education, background, certain ethnic uh, 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 boundaries have uh, kept a lot of people from getting a chance to be in what some of the establishment professions. In a right. way. You know, there are many professions that have quotas. You know, right. uh, uh, that, you know certain medical schools, well, yeah, they have quotas. And Show business, in that sense, has never had that. Uh, I don't think so. I think it's, it's always not. absorbed anyone and everyone that felt or thought they had the some talent, kind of a the gift. The talent was first. Don't you think so? Oh, yeah. And I think so. So to me, you know, for a guy like me who came out of the service at the end of uh, the Second World War in 1948, to get started in pictures, it was... The war ended in 1948? No, no, I came out here... Oh, oh. The war ended in 46. I was wondering how I got out early. <laughs> <laughs> but I came out here then, and... Uh, I was lucky. I was quite young then, and right. I wanted to get in the movies, and so uh, it's fabulous. What, who was the first major motion picture star you saw that they really awed you? Uh, Cary Grant. Yeah. Right. I sure like him. I like his style. I like the way right. he handles himself. I, I think he's really uh, given uh, film goers, all of us, some great pleasures yeah. in films and... He's a super actor. There's a, a thing about him. I happen to like him uh, very much. You know, there are other actors that are equally as good, and uh, I feel as domineering as they are on yeah. the screen, you know. But I think Carrie was the first man that I was... Don't think anybody handles light comedy and a well, sophisticated you know, attitude that he does. Right. Fabulous. Nobody. Fabulous. He had a subtlety, a way of doing things, you know. He has a sense of himself and a sense of the movies that he right. was always in. Many people can be so, uh, I think, very selfish once they attain some success they try to control everything in the making of a right. film. You know, if it's, if it's an actor or an actress or a director or a writer... They want to be all producer, things all of a sudden? They want to be all things to everyone. And uh, it can be difficult, you know. Right. It can be difficult for the actors that you work with as well. And Carrie never, uh, you know, right. permeates into a film. I was fortunate and privileged enough to make a picture with him called Operation Petticoat. Right. And, you know, to work with picture, a man right. like that was uh, a unique experience for all of us. Yeah. He once told me that... If you're a star of a film, you're really like the host in your home. And the star or the leading player is the one that kind of sets the tempo and the attitudes of people. Your show, for an example, you could see how beloved you are. It's because of your behavior. Is that's this right. Johnny Carson? That's Johnny, yes. That's <laughs> <laughs> Had to take it away oh, from me. Yeah. You give me all that and no, take it away. Take yes, you would. Let me sell my salad dressing. Can I do it for you? <laughs> Certainly you can. Let's find out why you'll see the wishbone name only on salad dressing. Watch. Big star did that. Erwin Ziegler creates exquisite silver. It's the only thing he puts his name on. This is the only thing you'll see the wishbone name on. Salad dressing. Because salad dressing is everything to wishbone. For wishbone dressings, we choose the perfect spices and herbs and let them marinate in an ideal combination of oil and vinegar to reach the peak of flavor. Wishbone. 
Salad dressing is the only thing we put our name on. What do you do when you're cold and soaked through? Lipton. Quick! A delicious cup of soup. When they all want soup, tomato, ring noodle, spring vegetable. Lipton. Quick! A delicious cup of soup. Hey, you could be enjoying Lipton cup of soup right now. Lots of kinds. Just pick your favorite and taste the good, rich, hot flavor. Lunchtime, anytime. Like when good hot soup would taste great before bed. Lipton. Quick! A delicious cup of soup. Delicious. talk about the uh, this the opening episode actually is on uh, this Sunday yes at nine o'clock in the right. east and west and eight uh, McCoy I've uh, you play I've a, done uh, three now forward. we've almost finished the third film and uh, we're gonna make one more uh, it'll be on Sunday night at nine o'clock right. on NBC it's uh, it's a con man in that sense a man that lives by more his wits than anything else uh, someone that's kind of hooked on gambling and just can't give it up and has to feed that habit sound familiar you, you make a good con man. Well, I feel like a con you man. You have that nice, <laughs> easy... Uh... Everybody's a con man. Yeah. Everybody is different strokes for different folks, you know? And it's nice to be able to corral that uh, feeling of being get able all your or wanting to do out it. And do right, it on you get it out of your system. When you get home, everybody in your family loves you because you've done it somewhere else. <laughs> we have uh, we got a short piece of... Uh... Yes, if I may, let me just yeah. give you a little lead into it. Yeah. It's uh, about halfway <laughs> through our film, we have to take over a Navy base, uh, a room in a Navy base to get these fellas who've stolen some money and make them feel uh, that uh, this is in fact a real Navy base. Uh, it is, but the people connected with it that I bring in are all people that I've hired to play these different characters. So that's, that's the con, right? Yes, that's more. And this is going to the base to get the room. Okay. So if you... Want to roll the film, Bobby? <laughs> Mr. Olana? Scusi. Uh, I'm Lieutenant Hills, Public Relations. Oh, buongiorno. El Dottore Roberto Rolano. Rolano? Si, Mr. Rolano. Cinema, si. Can Escrita. I help you? Si, va bene. È scritto il nome Carrie Strike. Che lavora, guerra. Script? Si, per la cinema. Cinema... A uh, film? Oh, va bene. Is... Ah, uh, buongiorno, signorina. Uh, well, I'll just uh, check with the exec's office. Si, si, si. I don't know why I wasn't informed about <laughs> this. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll just check with the exec's office. These snafus happen sometimes. Uh, snafu is an old Navy expression. Yeah. See, we're in kind of a backwater here, and uh, base is scheduled for mothball, and routine isn't quite what it back with that while they we're scheduled for mothball, and routine isn't quite what it should be. You understand? Here, let me help you with that. Now, I, uh, I suppose it's a war film. Oh. Carrier strike. Uh -huh. Enormous. Yeah. Well, I'm uh, sure you'll get all the cooperation uh, from the old man. Oh, now, Admiral Stemlock is, is quite a film buff. Uh huh. Yes, he, yes, yes. Well, what, why don't you come out in my office, Rolando? No, Rolando, Rolando. Oh, Mr. Rolando, I beg your pardon. Oh, sir. bravo, oh, thank you. Bello, bello, yeah, grande, grande. Be comfortable. Grazie. You know, for myself, Grazie. sir. Grazie. Si. I'd certainly enjoy hanging around while you were filming. Oh, si, 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 permiso. Si. permiso. My wife and I are very into film. I oh, see. Si. We belong to several film societies. Oh, va bene. I've seen some of the best obscure foreign films. Si. Now, I'm a very big fan of Ingmar Bergman. Uh, Ingmar, si, va uh, bene, Ingmar. Louis Bonuel. Si, Bonuel, si, And Kersau. Kersau, si, si, si. You know Kersau? Ah, si. Ah, Kersau. <laughs> Now, now tell me something quite honestly. Si. I, 
We enjoy some Fellini. Si, si. But now, now tell me honestly, don't you find him a bit, uh, Rococo? Rococo. Fellini. Oh, si, si, Fellini. Uh, scusi. I teach Giuseppe Fellini tutti know about cinema. Giuseppe? Si, the stuntman. No, no, no. I, I was talking about Federico Fellini, the director. Federico Fellini? I never heard of him. You never heard of Fellini? Scusi, scusi. Si, I heard of Federico Fellini. Si, si. I never see Fellini cinema. I uh, away location. Ten years. Ten years? We go to Sahara, wait for rain. <laughs> I uh, regret that I am unfamiliar with your work. I win the Italiano Distribution Golden Escargo Award three times in a row. Three years? Grand. Good, yeah. Look at Tom. Uh -huh. Look at Tom. Uh -huh. Grazie, grazie. 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 Get a chance to play all kind of people doing all yeah, kinds great. of things. Yeah, that's I'm having a, a stretch as an actor a little Wonderful bit, actors, you know, uh, I must uh, pay homage to a fabulous man, John McIver, who unfortunately yes. just died, yes. and three days before he had just finished with us. He does a wonderful performance in the picture. He was a nice gentleman. We've had him on the show several times. You know, it's, uh, isn't it incredible how to meet these people and then to see them on the screen and to see exactly the kind of people they are. You know, everyone that I've seen on the movies all have slivers of themselves and what you see on the screen. Really? They all bring a little of themselves to it. I don't care how great the actor thinks he is, or the actress, that they can hide themselves in costumes and clothing. There's always a little bit of them coming through. You, see, you know, you can tell the kind of people they are. You're going to be in The Last Tycoon, too, right? Yes, That's with uh, Ilya Kazan and Sam Spiegel's producing. Robert De Niro, uh, Jack Nicholson. I've got a part that's fabulous. I'm going to play a character called Rodriguez, who's a movie star in the 30s. So I'll get to wear my hair flat. With those wing collared stuff. <laughs> another, another oh, dimension. I love it. Capes over my shoulders, <laughs> scarves. We'll take a uh, short break here. Elaine Stritch is uh, standing by or sitting by, and she'll be out here. Come celebrate Hawaii with the people of United Airlines. Let the people of United bring you closer to the traditions and friendship of Hawaii. Excuse me, Revlon just invented the wheel. Come on. Well, it's the first wheel ever in a pencil. We call them automatic color-up sticks. You would. The wheel controls the stick, so you can control the coloring up. Color-up sticks for eyes shape your brows into fine lids. Color-up sticks for lips shape an outline. That's control. Come in, control. New automatic color-up sticks by Revlon. Beautiful. Curtis is McCoy, premiering Sunday at 9, 8 Central Time.
we stay, in a, if we stay away any longer, we're going to be in the fall season. That's the longest station break I've ever seen in my life. Like NBC's out renting out Faye's parking spot during this break. <laughs> Sitting up there counting. And give me some more. <laughs> How long were we gone that break? It seemed like no time to me, sir. Yeah. No, that's, that's too long. That's too long. Too long. Elaine Stritch is with us tonight. She is a, a fine actress, and we have not seen her for a while. But she says what's on her mind. You, and I, yes, I, that's Elaine now, I think, vocalizing. Um, I don't know where she's been for the... There she is. She's scared, she says. All right, would you welcome Elaine Stritch? Tell you, you people of the theater know how to take a bow. You see, I can always tell theater people. Now they we, come out and they take up the, they take a bow. No, you don't slink a, around and a, get over. We there. have a sneaky trick in the theater. We always want to fool you and and make you think we're scared. Really? And we are. <laughs> are there tricks to taking bows? I've I don't seen know. Some. I don't know. I'm I'm so excited about what I just did or what I didn't do that it doesn't make any difference. George Burns but, used to say either there's an act used to go off and. The arm would still be visible, like he hadn't completely left. He would go to the edge, but the hand would be there, like, you know, that he would come back reluctantly. How you been, and where have you been for, I'm what, fine. for four I'll, years? I'll, you, I'll hit you with the story. All right. And it's not about me, but it's such, it's such a wonderful story about, uh, well, Tony, you've lived in London uh, for a little while. Uh, they're, they're fresh stories. They're, you know, from the other side of the... And this is just a joke? Well, it's not a joke, actually. Oh. Well, it is, in a way. There were two English actresses mm -hmm. um, standing backstage one night, and Queen, Queen Elizabeth came to, to, to see the show. And they're peeking out the curtain, you see, because it's a, it's a command performance, and Queen Elizabeth is coming into the box. And one actress says to the other, what a, what a, what an entrance. And the other one said, what a part. <laughs> uh, I, I knew I shouldn't have told that. Oh, <laughs> well, you see that? No, that's... You see, I forgot my notes. That's, so really, I'm, a show, I'm yours, that's really a John. show business story, you know. Well, what but entrance, I mean, what, what, a, what an entrance, what a part. Um, that she has If I play. explained that, we, this whole show would go right yeah. into the garbage pan. <laughs> well, so we won't do it. How have you been, my dear? I'm just fine, and you made me so happy tonight. Why? I passed you in the hall. Well, that's enough, isn't it? <laughs> I passed him in the hall, and you're such a big star out here, and everybody's so crazy about you. And well, you just, thank you. But, but you did a nice thing to me. Johnny Carson. We had a fight I one beg night. I your pardon. We never well, had a fight, did we? What kind of a nice thing did he do? Well, he did. Um... He, he called me Laney, and... He Laney, no. That's well, I know, but, you know, my mother called me that, my father called me that, and, um, and Kim Stanley called me that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I figure you're okay. Well, it was just informal. <laughs> okay, now let's get down to the nitty-gritty. What right. are we going to talk I about? I don't know. What do you, now, you've been working in London. I've been in London for... I've lived in London for four years, and I'm back, and I just can't stand the, the bravos that are going on in the world. <laughs> it's, just, it's just incredible to, to be away for a long time, because everybody loves you when you're away for a long time. I can't get over it. I, I come to California, and I come to New York, and everything, and everybody's crazy about you. I just want to say to the audience here tonight that the, the best way to be loved is to stay away. <laughs> an awful lot and just come in a few times and say hi darling and everybody gets the hors d'oeuvres out it's just terrific you mean absence does make the heart grow fonder oh uh, yeah i think so i think so why were you away so long well i i, I went to london in um now it's elaine stretch time and no commercials I, I went to London and, and to do company for Hal Prince. Right. And I said to myself in the back of my mind, you've got to talk very fast on this show because they're going to come through with the cornflakes. No, so we do a commercial, but there's no, there's no great hurry. Take okay, but I, but I do get nervous. You and shouldn't I think get any nervous. Any sensitive person gets nervous on this show. No, no, you shouldn't be nervous. You're... So anyway, you, you just go to London and I did uh, company. I did it here and then I went to London. And then Johnny... Did you do I for know four you're years madly in love with me, but I gotta tell you, I got married. 
I did. You got married. Yes. We were a hold out there. You said you oh, were going to get married. Oh, I did. I did. You I said did. You... I did. You I said did. Uh, you were going to get married. Last I know. Time. I told you that in New York, but that was 45th Street, you know. <laughs> but I got married, and I got married, and I got married. What and made you decide seven... to finally get married? Um, you really I don't met know. the man of your dreams? Well, um. Uh, <laughs> Nobody's perfect. I mean, he doesn't have to be the man or Look, le let's level with each other. Um, I, I was walking in the embankment gardens one night. One afternoon. I'm, I'm trying to clean it up. Does it and make any difference with this night I, in the afternoon? I mean, oh, I see. <laughs> oh, excuse me. It's all right. And I met, I, 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 I met a guy. I was doing a Tennessee Williams play at the Hempstead Theater. And uh, we outsat everybody at a pub. Does anybody in this country know that what that means? To bar. Well, oh, well a pub. Oh, no, no. I know they know it's a bar, Tony. Yeah. But uh, this is an emotional thing. You know when you like somebody and you... <laughs> and you sit in a, in a pub or a bar and everybody says, Good night. Nice talking to you. Wasn't that a good rehearsal? You met him in the pub? No, he was in the show. But oh. we all go to have a drink at the oh, pub, and then okay. everybody starts to leave, and you say, Johnny. Oh, I see. And I all of a sudden, there's a guy's not leaving. And I want to tell you something. I'm not terribly secure, but I was just thrilled that he wasn't leaving. <laughs> and he just stayed there. And he said, um, would you like to have a hamburger or something? No. He's smooth. He's ras. He's... <laughs> This guy's no, this guy's no dum dum. I mean, the old hamburger ploy. And you said yes, I'd like a hamburger, right? I assume. Yep. And he said okay. Good. All right. And Two then, burgers. And then we. <laughs> and then we went for a walk. In the and embankment he does, gardens. And he does imitations, and we were in the embankment gardens. That sounds dirty over here, but it's straight no, over No, the here. embankment garden sound. What did he do? An impersonation or an impression in the gardens? No, we just said... <laughs> you remember when I left you in New York? Yes, yes. And I'm so sorry you haven't gotten successful since then. <laughs> well, Tell me what he's perfect. Huh? Tell me what happened in the gardens now. And yes, I, said, I said... After the hamburgers. I said, I've been laughing for four weeks, John, and uh, I think we should get married. And he suddenly turned into Jack Benny and he said... Why not? Only a four-week And it turned into a Catholic marriage with mass and communion and lunch at the Savoy. And I don't think that's bad at all. No, no. You always go to lunch at the Savoy after a Catholic communion. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you happy? I think we're getting... Are you happy? I think we're getting along better this trip. Yeah. Are you happy? I, I am scared. Of the marriage, you mean? Oh. And I want to ask everybody in this audience. I really mean it. Just I'm answer every other question. It doesn't fit. <laughs> Pick out the ones you like, and uh, <laughs> the audience at home, just every other one. No. Are you happy in the marriage? Oh, my God. Oh, good. Oh, you are <laughs> You're happy, and I'm glad to see you happy. I used to depend on you. Now I have a secret thing going. Well, yeah. Well, that's nice. Uh, can, you let, uh, can you let go? I have to hold up a bucket of chicken. <laughs> New sponsor since you left this. Now, here's some real goodness from Kentucky Fried Chicken. This is cooking, it's a meal. Here's real goodness from the colonel, it's a meal. It's finger licking good, so you know it's all right to let the colonel's people do your cooking tonight. You want a good meal, but you don't want a fuss. Come to the people who you know you can trust. Real goodness from Kentucky Fried Chicken.
that's the funniest thing you've ever said. <laughs> and no one will ever hear it. I didn't even hear it. You've got to, I know, but darling, you know, we yeah. always have a drink after the show, don't we? <laughs> Never mind. No. Do you like care for light? Yes, please. All righty. I want to tell you something about Johnny Carson. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been here for so long, but I mean, when I say that and you, and that gets that reaction, boy, wow, he must have been doing some swell stuff out here. But I'll tell you something. He, um, <laughs> he passed me in the hall and I'm a very sensitive girl. And he said, hello, pardon me? Johnny. Oh, John, oh, Johnny was talking. No. You see, Johnny and Tony talk a lot, yes. but I'm trying to get to you. And all I'm saying is that, that he passed me in the hall and he said, Hello, Laney. Didn't I hear that somewhere before? <laughs> is this oh, a Saturday Night Repeat? repeat? <laughs> I've heard that somewhere. <laughs> That's right, I did say that. And no, Kim Stanley used to call you that and your father no, and mother. No, you're not going to do it to me, fellas. Do what? I just don't think they heard it the first time. Oh. <laughs> You know, you picked up an English habit. I noticed when I was in England that people who smoke drop ashes on themselves a lot, but they don't, but they don't seem to care. Did you ever notice that? Guys will be sitting around and ashes are built up and they never do anything about it. They think it's dandruff and it's just careless. But have you noticed that about the English? Yeah. And they just, they, they just, just sit there. You know, there. I had notes, Johnny. I had notes to tell. Oh, God, you... Uh, uh, you don't need any notes with you. I, it's just I better have... To... No, wait a minute, darling. <laughs> I get up in the... Boy, does that scare me. I told the same story twice. No. Nah. Anyway, <laughs> um, all the alcoholics in the world are going to say, well, she's one of us. No. <laughs> why, do we, why, why did you come back from London? Are you going to work in Los Angeles? I'm, I'm, I came out... I'm, I'm, my career is so smashing. Oh, good. I, I came out... <laughs> I came all the way from London to do a movie, and it was canceled. Oh, really? When? And so I'm just dancing around in Burbank. You know, and I, and I thought it was rather nice of you to ask me on your How show. How can they cancel you in a movie? Uh, well, uh, I came out to do the Mike Nichols uh, movie, and uh, for some reason or other, I don't know, somebody got the makeup mixed up. I don't know. But, uh, but it's, it's, it's not going to be done for a oh. couple of months. But never mind, I Are have a paid live? vacation, and, it, and, and I got a chance to see you again. Yeah. Is, is, are you going to live here in California now for a while? No. Oh. No, I'm going back to the Savoy Hotel, and mm -hmm. that's where I live. And, and I, I miss America so much that I can't. Do you live in a hotel? I live in a hotel. Doesn't that get kind of boring, living in a hotel? No, no. Clean sheets every night? You are can you have kidding? them at home, too, you know. Yes. What? I mean, you can have clean sheets at home. Well, I never did. No. Oh. <laughs> so I'm pretty happy entirely. about that. So does it, your it, husband it, like living in a hotel? Yes, he does. He likes what I like. <laughs> and he'd better like it. No, uh, that, no, I don't mean he, what does wrong. He do? What does he do? Do you mind if I John ask? is 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 an actor. He's a painter. He he does a, adaptations of of uh, screenplays in in London. Good. And he's uh, more important than all of this stuff. He's terrific. Well, that's nice. And uh, I waited till I was 47 years old to get married, and I'm married, and I'm telling you, do it. See, now, Lotto, you admitted your age. Oh. Most women would not say that. No, but I, I've been married for three years, so I'm going to make that clear to everybody. If anybody thinks I'm 47, they're wrong. <laughs> because I was 47, and I've been married three years, so why don't you figure that out for yourself? And we'll all meet back here in five minutes. <laughs> because that's the truth. <laughs> she has, all right, you one note, changed. one note, Johnny, yeah. my darling, don't get mad at me, because no, we fought in New York, but we're going to get Did along. Did we fight out in here. New York? One darling story about London. Can I do a commercial first? Commercial first, yeah. and come no. back for the darling story. Yes, we wouldn't miss that. No. <laughs> We'll be right back after this commercial. What's new, Pussycat? Chow, chow, chow. What's new, Pussycat? The taste of chow, chow, chow. 
What's Purina done to Purina Cat Chow? Made it taste better than ever. Now, great new taste in nutritious main dish meals your cat will enjoy meal after meal after meal. What's new, Pussycat? Chow, chow, chow. What's new, Pussycat? Lennox goes to great lengths to bring you heating and cooling systems that conserve fuel. Right, Dave Lennox? Right. Innovations. That's how Lennox does it. Take our Fuel Master heat pump. When connected to electric, oil, or gas furnaces, it heats and cuts heating costs up to 20%. And it air conditions automatically. Interested? Call us. We're in the yellow pages. We'll tackle any job. Tawan Nesca, Dave. Any Halleck? Darling story for us. Oh, now. wow. Uh, okay. Quick story. Quick story about London, because okay. I think you'd all like to hear something about London. Yes, we would. I'm on Regent Street. It's 5.30 on a Friday afternoon, and uh, cabs are, you know, you can't get a cab. And I'm saying, choo -choo, you know, and the London cabs are terrific. You know, you walk into them like uh, Janet Lee's living room. You know, it's ridiculous. It, they're the biggest cabs in the world. So... You get in, and, uh, but, but I couldn't get one. So I said, hey, hey, hey. And I went over and I said, uh, hey, wait a minute. I said, I know your light's off, mm -hmm. but I said, I just want to go to the Savoy. Now, does anybody in this audience know what the Savoy means? No. Was, oh, all right, let me tell you what it means. It is the chicest, the chicest, most uh, uh, hotel in the world. Not true. Uh, no, well, let's not go into that. Can I get... Who brought it up? <laughs> anyway, meanwhile... But anyway, it is a chic hotel. And I said to the driver, the Cockney cab driver, I said, I just want to go to the Savoy. And he said, who doesn't? <laughs> and drove. And drove off. And it's an inside story. No, and a cute London story. And it laid a bomb. And no, I that's wish not. I were dead. Most, no, no. That's a very nice London story. No, that's, that's, that's a better than average run-of-the-mill uh, London story. <laughs> <laughs> well, get up and sing it. Uh, yes, I'm not going to get up, though. No, but you, you don't have much time to sing this okay, if you're going to sing go, a song. Go, go. quickly. What are you going to sing? Wrong key, everything. Okay. Mm -hmm. He, is that right? He, I got it. Okay, do, do the other thing, because it's so terrific. Even if we go off the air, it doesn't matter. Give me the introduction. <laughs> he was too good to me. How can I get along now? So close he stood to me. Everything seems so wrong now. <laughs> he could have brought me the sun. <laughs> We have to cut away, do we, for a second? Just keep...
before we say goodnight, I, I should mention that uh, next Thursday, October the 9th, isn't it? I open for a week up at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, and Joy Bishop will be here on Monday. So if you happen to be in the vicinity, and uh, Joy Bishop will be here on Monday with Deborah Carr and Norm Crosby, Freddie Fender, and Dr. Joyce Brothers. It's good to see you again, dear. I'm Thank glad you got a brand new life, and you're happy. Okay, and Tone, you'll open uh, Sunday night in yeah. McCoy on NBC at 9 o'clock. Thanks, it's great to see you. Thank you for being with us. Have a nice day. See you Thursday night. Right. Have a nice day. Stay tuned for the Midnight Special next on NBC.